Hello and welcome back. I have some bad news and that news is that they're doing construction um, on my apartment outside. Stevie, you want to say hi? Here's our podcast guest for the day, Mrs. D.B. Wonder. Everyone always thinks that her name is short for Stevie Nicks, but it's actually short for Stevie Wonder or Steven Spielberg. So whichever one you want. But anyways, as I was saying, there's construction happening in the apartment outside. So I'm really sorry if you hear hammering or loud noises. It is very unfortunate, but I feel like I just had to keep filming and recording, keeping up with the schedule. So here we are. Um, but anyways, it's Valentine's Day today. I'm recording Valentine's. You're not going to hear it on Valentine's, but there is just some energy in the air today that is just unreal. It's gorgeous. Regardless if you're in a relationship or not, it's just something feels magical right now. Um, I think Valentine's Day has, it's, it's usually not this big of a deal. Maybe it is. I'm just like forgetting, but it feels like this year everything is just valentine's valentine's love everything like just the decorations the flowers i also went downtown today where i used to live which is just like 10 minutes away and literally it was crazy it's a flower district down there and so there was just flowers and bouquets and like just like heart-shaped balloons like flying everywhere it was like some magical romantic moment like it was just so special and all the street vendors were selling their flowers it's just like so great so i love this holiday it's one of my favorite holidays i think for me it goes halloween then valentine's day are my favorite i don't know why they just are so lively and fun and there's no real like rooted family i think element to either of those holidays which i like because i'm not a huge like i don't have a big family so I like holidays that are just more fun and decorative and kind of just like playful as opposed to being like Thanksgiving or Christmas or whatever. So anyways, it's been a good day. I feel better. I've been feeling pretty shitty though because I've been on antibiotics and I've just been dealing with some like health stuff. So day to day, I've been feeling really dragged down and very lethargic and very shitty and so it's really taken a toll on mental health as well. Um, my anxiety has been raging. It's crazy how whenever I kind of feel shitty overall, some of my past anxieties or phobias or weirdness, kind of weird tendencies, OCD tendencies, whatever, will like come raging back. So I've been dealing with those this week, just the um, reoccurring thoughts and patterns and stuff like that, which I hate, but it is what it is. We go through it. We get to the other side, obviously. I'm still kind of like in, in that in-between of like I'm happy and I can notice happy things and good things, but I'm also in like a weird a weird space as well. Um, but life's been pretty good. Life's been pretty good since I last chatted um, with you guys last week. And I've been doing a lot of internal work and I've been questioning myself in a good way, like, like, you know, questioning, like my beliefs on things or like having like my limiting beliefs on myself, or I've been reading a lot and I've been kind of diving deeper into like more of these like self help, um, books and podcasts and things like that. I think I have this like thirst for knowledge right now. I go through moments where I just want to play and have fun and like go crazy and create. And then I think I have these like kind of more internal moments where I want to just read and kind of absorb knowledge. And I'm also creating this ebook, which is going to be a guide to creativity, which I need to implement myself. So usually when I create these ebooks or these guides, they're really for myself mainly. I mean, they're for everyone. I mean, that's the purpose of them is to help others and to like share knowledge and experience. But ultimately I usually make them because I feel a calling to need to make it. So currently I feel like I've, I've mentioned in my last episode where I feel very kind of burnt out and in a creative rut. Um, not a creative rut, but I just feel creatively hindered and weird. And so I think I've been reading this book called The Artist's Way which is all about creativity and kind of rebuilding the inner artist and the inner, inner creative. And so I'm using 
parts of that book and parts of my own experiences to create this guide and so it's been really helpful for me to work on an external project like that i think also being able to put my writing and my energy and my design and um all those things into a project is really cool so that's going to come out at the end of the month which i'm really excited about um so that we could all just be more creative and better uh, people and more interesting people and all of that and get off our phones truthfully and kind of explore the world outside of just the interwebs which is so great I can't hate on the social media and hate on the interwebs because look at us you guys are sitting here watching me on your screen which is crazy like you're watching me right now and I'm sitting here right now I can't even think about that I, I haven't I have like an existential hour every day and today and right now I can't do it so Anyways, let's get into today's actual topic, which is self-respect and self-respect and self-discipline. And I talk a lot about discipline. I talk a lot about habit building and like all of that jazz, but I read a page from a book that struck the shit out of me. It kind of just like hit me you know when you read something sometimes and just like hits you over the face you're just like whoa i like needed to hear that well i read a passage from this book and i never sometimes i don't like to share books all the time because this book in particular that i'm reading that i'll share that it's from this passage is from i don't love the book so like would i recommend it to read it no i think a lot of it is quite boring personally but the passage from it was amazing so let me read the passage first so you can get where my head was and then i got inspired to then create a bunch of notes and my own research and my own analysis of kind of the passage so let me read that passage first let me get the book one second okay we're back so the book is called slouching towards bethlehem by joan didion who is one of my favorite LA-based writers. She is amazing. She honestly is, I think, such an important art author for girls, especially in their 20s. Um, her work is very memoir-based, very coming of age, very fun to read since I'm from Los Angeles, and so a lot of the elements that she talks about, she's from Sacramento, which is like North California, but a lot of the elements that she talks about I fully understand and relate to, like the Santa Ana winds or um, certain parts of like Los Angeles culture, California culture. So it's really fun for me to read, but she has such great insight. I see myself a lot in her. I think that she is a very creative thinker. She's very fascinating. And the way that she talks about things, even like I'll show you this one passage, I just feel so similar to her. So. She has an essay called On Self-Respect, and let me read you this page, okay? Bear with me here. This is reading time, so get cozy, get comfortable. Let's do it, okay. So she's talking about something, and she says, like Jordan Baker, people with self-respect have the courage of their mistakes. They know the price of things. If they choose to commit adultery, they do not then go running in an access of bad conscience to receive absolution from the wrong parties, nor do they complain unduly of the unfairness, the undeserved embarrassment of being named co-respondent. In brief, people with self-respect exhibit a certain toughness, a kind of moral nerve. They display what was once called character, a quality which, although approved in the abstract, sometimes lost ground, loses ground to other, more instantly negotiable virtues. The measure of its slipping prestige is that one tends to think of it only in connection with homely children and United States senators who have been defeated, preferred in the primary for re-election. Nonetheless, character, the willingness to accept responsibility for one owns life is the source from which self-respect springs. Mm. I love that. Self-respect is something that our grandparents, whether or not they had it, knew all about. They had instilled in them young a certain discipline, the sense that one lives, by doing things one does not particularly want to do, by putting fears against the possibility, by putting fears and doubts to one side, by weighing immediate comforts against the possibility of larger, even intangible comforts. So this passage is so much for me because oh, the topic of self-respect and character is so fascinating to me. And it's something that I think I think a lot about. And I think it's something that I talk a lot about in therapy. And it's something that I have had to really relearn as I've gotten older because I think 
back in my early days which i've talked about and which has not been well received on the internet is that i used to not respect myself and i used to make poor decisions and i used to be a very toxic person and i made a podcast episode a bit ago that basically said like i've had toxic behaviors in the past and i have owned up to things that i've done and i've had to be honest with myself and get help and stuff like that to overcome some of those toxic more kind of not great parts of myself and so this idea of character being something that i think i think it's really cool to have character and i think people that can own up to their mistakes and own up to things they've done and past selves and um own up to just like their authentic selves whether it's positive, negative, whatever, shows a great deal of character and it shows a great deal of self-respect. And so I love that she compared the two because I think it's really true. And I think that I've done a lot now of kind of research and my own self-exploration to kind of figure out how to gain more self-respect. And I think one of the things that I've done the last year is going back to that, that whole like admitting that I've had struggles, admitting that I have mental health issues, admitting that I've been a shitty person in the past, admitting that I haven't been, you know, a great partner or a great friend or a great whatever, a daughter in the past. And that I've decided to obviously change those things and become a good person and become wholesome and become a good functioning member of society. But that there was a point when I wasn't and I've learned a lot from that. And I think that that takes a lot of gusto and a lot of character to admit those things and to be honest with yourself and so i like that because i think i've been trying to figure this out this whole idea that i'm like why am i so honest with myself why can't i share online that i've done bad things in the past but i think it's because i do have character and i have lived through a lot of shit and i've been through so much stuff and i've seen so much stuff and have personally done so much that i feel like i can talk about it and i can own up to those things and i can do better and i have done better so anyways i think though self-respect let's get more into self-respect though in general um i think self-respect and having self-respect is really important because ultimately we come first i mean you want to be a good person you want to you know have friendships have relationships know how to take care of someone know how to care for someone love someone be a good person but i think ultimately we come first right um we are our own person we have to take care of ourselves we have to like you know accompany ourselves our wants our needs all of that and i think by honoring your needs honoring your gut feelings honoring your instincts honoring you know what you deserve is self-respect and i had this breakup earlier last year not early last year middle of last year um and i i chose to break up with this person because I said to him basically, look, the situation that we're in regarding like friendships and other weird external things was not working. It was putting me in a position where I was feeling really small, really shitty, really insecure, really just like absolutely terrible, truthfully. And I remember saying to him, I said, look, I love you and I love this relationship and it breaks my heart that we can't be together because of these external circumstances but I have enough self-respect to know what I want and what I need. And so I have to step away. And that was a huge moment for me because I've never done that. I've always been the cool girl. I've always been go to the flow. I've always been like taking shit and have being walked all over. And I've been learning to say, no, like put my foot down and putting your foot down and establishing boundaries and establishing what you want is the greatest form of self-respect. And that could be with a job, with a parent, with, friends it's not just romantically but in any way like putting your foot down and saying like i'm sorry like i can't do that or that doesn't work for me and not really leaning into like people pleasing tendencies whatever being confrontational all of that it's character it shows that you respect yourself and it shows that you care about yourself and i care about your happiness which you should always um so creating self-value i think is really important to do um so first off, maybe even establishing what your values are, establishing, like for me, I've had to establish, like, what are my biggest values? What do I value in a person? What do I value in a 
friendship and relationship, whatever. So like reestablishing those I think is really important. And then kind of looking at your relationships and being like, are those values being met? Do I value these people? Do they value me? All of that is really good to look at. And then another big one is kind of looking at how we speak to ourselves because I think a lot of self-respect comes from self, self-speech self and the negative self-talk that we can tend to have to ourselves. Like, God, of course you didn't do that. Or like, you literally suck at that. Or like, you're so ugly right now. Or like, you look terrible. Or you're such a piece of shit. Or like, how could you do that? Or like, of course you forgot that. Like all that negative self-talk is really not cool because because if you think about it, you probably wouldn't say that shit to a friend, right? Like you probably wouldn't say like, bitch, you're so ugly right now. Like you wouldn't, like we don't do that to our friends, right? So don't do it to yourself. Like that self-respect because you respect your friend, you wouldn't do that stuff. You wouldn't say that. But you obviously don't respect yourself if you're talking to yourself that way. So Because that really put a lot in perspective to me. It's like, I'm not treating myself the way that I would treat a friend. And that shows I don't respect myself, you know? Um... Okay, pause. I had to get water. I've been drinking this like electrolyte water. That is so good. They're really, they're really going crazy. The construction right now. This is bad. But anyways, we persevere. Okay, where was I? Sorry, I got distracted by getting water and the construction. It's quite literally so loud. I'm so sorry. Um, okay. Let's see, let me make sure that my door is closed because like this is crazy. Self-discipline. So the next part of self-respect that I think is really great is self-respect is a form of self-discipline or self-discipline is a form of self-respect. And that's something that I talk about a lot. I always will post like a gym photo on Instagram and then be like discipline over motivation, which I think is something that one thing that I've had to really learn is that there's going to be days you wake up that you don't want to go to work, that you don't want to work out, that you don't want to get up early, that you don't want to go for a run, that you don't want to eat healthy, whatever. And it's about choosing the hard thing, choosing the thing that will eventually make your life better and give you more long-term pleasure as opposed to immediate pleasure. Like if you, you know... Your bed's really nice and comfy in the morning. It's very warm. Of course, you want to stay in there and stay in bed, but that's immediate pleasure versus a long-term pleasure of you getting up, getting your day started, going for a run, stretching, whatever, and feeling that the effects of that long-term. So just love the idea of long-term versus short-term pleasure. And the fact that like, yeah, having discipline and having knowing how to challenge yourself and kind of taking care of yourself having those like self-care rituals and things like that are a form of self-respect and it's showing that you know i respect myself enough to do the things that i know will make me feel good and that are good for my body and that are good for me um saying no to certain things saying yes to certain things challenging myself all of that that is like the greatest form of self-respect and i think that one thing she mentions in the book is that like I think generations previous previous generations are have been really good at discipline and just doing things when they don't feel like it and I think that our generation is so much more entitled myself included to where I'm like I don't want to do that I don't feel like doing that I'm not gonna like whatever like I'll just like not do that today or I'll just put it off or whatever and we can put things off and then does it make us these really hardworking, really uh, strong people? Kind of makes us a little bit like, well, why do I have to do that? And like, fuck it, whatever, I don't care. And it's not really a good trait to have. So I've been really trying to focus on doing things I don't want to do all the time, getting things done, having that discipline, because it also um, just like shows yourself that you can trust yourself too. That's the biggest thing with self-respect for me is that by you telling yourself or writing down on a list like something you wanna do or accomplish, by you checking that off and saying, I did wake up early, I did go for my run, I did finish work at five, I did meditate today, I, and checking those things off and getting them done, it's you're showing yourself like, hey, I respect you enough and I respect my time and my energy and I showed up whenever I said I was gonna show up and I did what I needed to do and that's sick as fuck. Like being able to show up for yourself like that is really cool and it's hard at times because sometimes we just want to let our mental health or depression or tiredness whatever kind of take the stage but 
you have to get back up there and be like, no, like I'm taking control of my life again. That's another big thing that I wrote down is with self-respect, it's taking control of your own life. And so taking ownership of your life, your choices, the things that you've done and the things that you choose to do and also not play the victim. I think honestly, like self-respect going back to that character thing, it's like this brutal honesty of like, how are you actually showing up every day? Like, are you actually giving it your all? Are you actually challenging yourself? Are you kind of just like, I don't know, letting things happen, saying no to things, just kind of letting things pass by. Like, are you really like showing up for your life and valuing your life and your time? Or are you kind of just passing by? So it's another good thing too is is taking ownership of your life, which I like, um, and taking to your promises. So yeah, ultimately you're valuing yourself and your life, and I don't know. So I think it's an interesting conversation, and I've been enjoying kind of ruminating on it and thinking about it and thinking about my own life, my own choices and the honesty that I have for myself. And I think it's gotten me in a lot of shit. Oh my God, it's so loud. I'm gonna have to literally like finish this soon because I can't handle it. I think also going back to having character, I think that the more, kind of goes with like the identity capital thing I talked about a few episodes ago about how building identity capital and building self-respect and kind of that ownership is so 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 cool and so important i think people that have good character you know your parents always growing up were like that builds character well things like that do like having going through hardships um going through you know things like getting in trouble for something or owning up to your mistakes or um getting caught honestly all of those dealing with the repercussions of life can make you build character and ultimately you know that's why i think two people that are able to like have addictions or have problems with drugs or alcohol or sex or whatever it is and being able to go and get help for that like go to aa meetings or go to sex anonymous sex love anonymous meetings or whatever it is it's like getting help going to therapy talking it out i think is so powerful people that like write books after having addiction issues or whatever is sick and it shows again a, a sense of character and a sense of stability in who you are and how you are that you've changed and all of that so i don't know i think that sometimes i get down on myself for having been the way that i was previously and then i go I did what I could with what I had and who I was at the time and I take ownership of that. I take ownership of being a shitty person in the past and being able to now make the choices to be a good person and to have self-love and self-respect. And this goes to tie it back into Valentine's Day and relationships of any kind. I think that the, the point I made earlier on about I guess having self value is really cool and I just want to like reinstill that at the end of this episode now that you need to choose yourself and you need to choose what you want and your values and where you are in life and your happiness and your pleasure because too many of us do not choose those things and we let relationships drag on, we let friendships drag on, we let people walk all over us and it does not help you, it only will hurt you. and. That isn't a self-respect thing, you know? Same with like, you could even have this argument with like girls who let's say like, or people that want to sleep around and like date a bunch of different people, right? Nothing wrong with that. That is so great. But if it's on your terms, if you feel like you're in control and if you feel like you are doing it in a way that is honoring your needs and your wants and not just doing it for validation for other people, for for men for women whatever and so it's about looking at those things too you know like you can be the biggest hoe quote unquote hoe but like if it's on your terms and you own that shit and you want to sleep around and you want to go on dates and you want to do all those things and like that's very self-respecting and that's very cool and so i think it's like owning anything that you do you know if you're going to do something own it and it doesn't matter the label people put on it whatever it is because ultimately also being someone who has self-respect they don't care about the validation of others and that's one thing I've been dealing with too, is like I, I've always sought outward validation from others, whether it's, whether it's like jobs, doing good work, being attractive, whatever it is. And so that's not self-respect because that doesn't mean that I'm finding value in myself. It means that I need to find value through other people. 
and that's okay to some extent and I think I'm human I'm 25 like I can't be perfect I'm not gonna be this high-end like Jay Shetty wise you know profit but I will say that's something I'm working on is that finding outward kind of validation will only get you so far and if i really want to respect myself and love myself which i'm trying to do then i have to have it come from inside which is kind of a corny statement but it's very true so anyways we'll end it on that note the construction's kind of driving me crazy and i think this episode's already like around 25 30 minutes or so so hopefully I'm kind of liking, I've been kind of liking these like under 30 minute episodes just because I feel like attention spans are so short. So it's good to have something that could be kind of like nitty gritty to the point. But I love you guys and I hope everyone has such a good Valentine's Day and I really hope everyone's having a good week. And I will put this episode, by the way, I'm putting the audio still on Spotify and podcasts. It's just that this is an added bonus if you want to if you've been wanting to watch the episode so they'll still be up there if you need to listen or you can even go from like video to the um to the audio but anyways love you guys talk to you sunday or next week